Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to be with you. I hope you had a great Tuesday yesterday. Uh, today is Wednesday, uh, March 24th. Our focus this week is on greatness. Um, and, and I hope you rejoice with me every day that um, greatness is not about me being better than the next person. Because <laughs> you know, none of us can win this game. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and that, and we soon play in a place where we're defeated uh, because we just can't achieve that. Uh, and yet, it, like a knee-jerk reaction, we measure greatness with how we compare to others. Uh, and, and Jesus in, in, is, is, teaches us, no, each and every one of us can be great in him. Uh, and he redefines greatness for us. And he shows us how we can do that um, by, in a sense, letting him be our pattern for living. As he served us, we serve others. And uh, uh, the least of these in our lives uh, with a cup of water, uh, uh, we can do this. And, and 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 this is what greatness looks like. That's what we're looking at this week. And um, what a wonderful gift this is to us in in our lives, where we never feel like we're we're um, we're where we should be. Where we always tend to compare ourselves to others. We're not as good. We're not as we, we don't have what whatever it might be. Um, and Jesus comes along and says, "No, this is what greatness is." Uh, and so uh, we're we're beginning now, chapter ten. Uh, and, and chapter 10 begins with uh, kind of a segue into, uh, uh, a, a, they, they ask him about marriage and divorce and the like, and, and he talks about that. Um, and, and then he starts to talk about children. So it really makes sense because, of course, uh, marriage is really important for kids, right? Uh, we, we know that uh, it, it's really powerful uh, and, and the, the healthiest uh, thing in children's lives when they have a mom and dad who are, who, who are in there in a loving uh, relationship, right, in, in marriage. Um, and, and this is no, if you're a single parent, God bless you. I pray for you all the time and you're doing great stuff and you're stepping up and God will bless that. Right. Uh, but just, you know, study after study has shown, uh, that, that a, a child raised with mom and dad in a, in a healthy marriage, that's a, a really good thing in their life. Uh, and, and so naturally Jesus talks about this. What is he doing? He's standing up for the least, the least of these, the children. And then it flows into a, another section with children three times in these chapters, in this chapter, right? Jesus talks about children and holds up children and serving children. What, what are they? they? They, In a sense, they are the essence of the least of these, huh? Uh, the ones that don't have power, the ones who can't stand up for themselves. Uh, and, and, and they are, in, in a sense, embody everyone who fits that, that uh, uh, description in our lives, whoever they may be at any time. Uh, and, and so it, it segues into this. Um, here we go. Uh, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. Hadn't they been listening? You see how hard it is to get this idea of greatness? We, we kind of push away the least of these. Uh, we don't have time for them. We, we want to go with the important things and the important people. And so the disciples were rebuking the children. Huh? Get out of here, man. You're not important. You're, you're, who are you? See? And, and I love this. Uh, when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. I don't know whether that word is ever used to Jesus anywhere else. Indignant. He was kind of ticked off, right? Uh, what are you talking about? Don't you see what I've been teaching you? These are one. Of, this, this is what the kingdom's all about, huh? Giving a, a, a cup of water to the least of these, these children. And and so then, what does Jesus do? He said to them, "Let the little children, I'm sorry, little children, come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these." I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. You ever notice that the, the least in this world are so much more open to the good news of Jesus than the, um, those who are considered the greatest in this world? It's kind of interesting, huh? Uh, and, and so Jesus is saying, don't discount the least um, because many, many in his kingdom will come from those who we consider the least. Uh, and then he took his, uh, the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Uh, this was the cup of water that he gave them, his, his blessing. Do you see the example he's giving his disciples? Again, this is the third time in uh, a chapter and a half, right? And he's showing them what it looks like. Uh, and, and in a sense, he's calling them out. And what's interesting, uh, this chapter then segues into a piece where this uh, rich young man comes up and he's, and, and well, let me, let me read this to you. He says, uh, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And really what he's saying is, how can I be great enough?
to earn eternal life. That, that's what he's saying here. And Jesus mentions all those commandments that has to do with relationship. Not the first three that has to do with relationship with God, but the last seven that has to do with relationship and living in love in relationship with those around us, giving cups of cold water to our neighbor, right? Uh, and, and this guy said, well, I've done all of that since my, since my youth, right? I've, I've, I'm, I'm good if that's all greatness is. And, and Jesus said, okay, just sell everything you have, give it to the poor, the least of these, and then come follow me. Um, Jesus loved this young man. He was showing what greatness looked like. Now, Jesus isn't calling all of us to um, to be paupers, right? Uh, but he's certainly calling us to use everything we have for his kingdom. Um, and and the stories he told of, of uh, money and riches, uh, you know, like the guy that uh, had this great crop, and he said, what do I do? I got so much, so he built more barns. And instead of being loving and giving cups of cold water to those around him, he said, I'm going to build more barns. Huh? And, and, he, said, and he was called a fool because that night he died. Um, and, and so, you know, that's, that's a whole other week subject, right? Probably a month subject. But the idea of, uh, of how we use our money for, for, to give cups of, of water to people, right? Uh, spiritually in, in, the, in the, the mission of the kingdom, as well as physically as we love others in his name. So this was a discussion, see? And, and then uh, right after Jesus got done with this, and he said, he said how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. And of course, the disciples didn't understand that either because they thought, well, the rich must be blessed by God. But, but Jesus was saying, no, the, what's the greatest in the kingdom? To be a servant, to, 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 to give away cups of water, right? To, <laughs> and, and the rich so often don't, don't do that. See, they, 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 they kind of courted it themselves. And so it's hard for them to get into the kingdom because they, they're, they're worshiping something else than God. And the disciples didn't get that. They were struggling with that. And, and Jesus said his famous, you know, the, the camel, the eye of the camel, it's harder for a rich man to get through, that, that, that thing. Um, and so he gets that settled. Uh, and, and the disciples uh, uh, said, said uh, well, who can be saved then? And he said, uh, uh, with God, everything is possible. Right. So so all of us have a tough time with this. And as God's spirit touches our heart, um, we 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 uh, we receive uh, what it means to be great and, and we live in that. So so but this closes with this. Um, Peter speaks up and he says, we have left everything to follow you. Um, so we're great then. Right. This guy that you said to give away everything to be great. We did it. And so we're great. And Jesus said immediately, uh, I tell you the truth, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or children or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in the present age than in the age to come. Uh, and, and so Peter is, is beginning to catch on, but, but now it's about me. I look what we did again. huh? And Jesus again yanks his chain and says, nah, Peter, you're not getting it here. It's not a comparison with the other person, how much you did. Uh, because God is going to take care of you. Peter, just live by faith, knowing that everything is yours, right? Uh, uh, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be given to you. Uh, uh, so, so knowing that you have everything in me, Peter, you can live in greatness. You can live for the least of these. You can live uh, uh, whatever it looks like, uh, soothing them with, with cups of water, whatever that looks like in your life. Um, let's pray. Uh, Father, um, this was a lot of stuff today. Um, and yet again, in, in your son, Jesus, you held up children for us, uh, the least of these. Uh, and you held up the idea uh, that, that greatness uh, um, comes in service. Uh, and, and you empower us to do that, Lord, as you remind us that, that in you we have all things. So we pray, Lord, that we might live in that joy, that we can be great in you uh, because we can be certain. Uh, that we have all things in you, our greatest servant. Pray in your name. Amen. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, may God be with you. Bye-bye.